What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Jam, and I'm back again with another Scarlet Violet discussion. Now, this one's a little late. Um, I was really busy working on something on my Switch uh, the past few days, so I didn't actually get to uploading, and I apologize for that. I was on a daily streak for a bit, I think. Um, but I wanted to talk in this video about all of the returning Pokemon in the Scarlet Violet DLC. Now, I haven't actually looked at the list, um... At least not a lot. I kind of did a general screw through just to make sure I was on the right one. Like mods I'd already been spoiled about. And um, did some um, reverse research. But yeah, this is um, the leak for all the Pokemon that are going to be in the Scarlet Violet DLC. Scully View. Scarlet Violet DLC now. Um, of course, I, this is a leak. It's not, you know, confirmed. I don't think. So take that for a grain of salt, but we can say safely this is probably legit based off how they did it, you know, finding Pokedex data and stuff. So let's get into this list. By the way, to the person who wanted me to put sheets on my bed, I apologize. I didn't at the time of this video, but um, I, I am apologetic. Uh, just know that. Uh, so we have uh, right up the top of the list, we get right up here. Um... We have the Kanto starters. Now, uh, we could have assumed they were probably all going to be put in there eventually. The Kanto starters are iconic. Um, I am excited to see them back. Of course, we haven't been without them for very long. And what I primarily want to see is what non-Sword Shield Pokemon are in here. Like, what Pokemon that weren't in Sword Shield are in here. Like, I see um, Arbok and Atkins, which are pretty um, cool ones on their own. I remember running, like, a Gunshot, Arbok, and Gen 6. It was... It was nuts, but, um, yeah, there's a lot of lines here that weren't in that game. Like, I remember Geodude wasn't in that game. I don't think the Bellsprout line was, but I could be wrong. Let's see what else we got here. We got, um, okay, so this is, I'm actually really excited to see. I'm excited to see Porygon and Snorlax back. Those are two of my favorite mons from the generation. Um, Lapras, too. I'm glad they're incorporating those late dex mods, because obviously in Gen 1, the late dex ones were the really cool ones. Those are the ones you really like. They had the Porygon, the Eevee line, uh, the Legendary Birds, which of course this isn't, um, this does, uh, dex. This list does not contain any Pokemon from the, uh, home release. Of course, that's a separate thing. I think I, I already did a video going over that that you guys can check out, uh, but... These are all the mons that are supposedly going to be in the new Scarlet Violet DLC now. Yeah, there's not a lot of crazy Kanto ones up in here. Um, of course, this is on Pacefin. Um, nothing really crazy to know. No game changers. I'm also kind of looking for competitive uh, changes. Like, what competitive mons could really change the meta? And there really isn't too much in here for me to know. Um, now, Gen 2 is a little bit different. Because now we are getting the Johto line. We have not seen the Johto line, not counting BDSP, since, um, obviously, Gen 7. So, and that's, you know, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. And I don't count Gen 7 because Gen 7, um, when I talk about competitive specifically, it was its own little meta. It's not the main meta, like VGC or just general competitive that people played. Um, they played it when they wanted to use the sets they couldn't, but it didn't really have a big impact on the meta. Like, a lot of people, I think, for the most part, played Sword Shield and, uh, or Showdown competitive, so... Seeing these guys back into the main main series is huge um, because we all know what um, Totodile is big for, his sheer force. That's a huge ability. Um, the Meganium line were tanks, and we obviously knew about um, the Cyndaquil line returning, so I guess they included some things uh, from the DLC, but they aren't including like all the legendaries, Mewtwo, Mew, Groudon, Kyogre, etc., so yeah, aside from that, Jota is looking... Um, we're getting Quagsire back, of course. That's DLC, which Wooper and Quags are already in the game. You can trade for them. So, eh, I, I guess. So this is an interesting list to say, at least with that. Um, Skarmory has come back. Now, Skarmory, amazing setup, man. I love to use Skarmory. If you watch some of my earlier Showdown videos, not even earlier, but I don't film as much anymore. If you go see some of my Showdown teams, um, I repped Skarmory um, because I love Skarmory. It's an amazing setup, man. It has Sturdy, so it gets... um. It gets its spikes and its stealth rocks up, and overall really good. There's that priority berry, so we can get a Brave Bird off at the end. Really good mod. I'm really excited to see him back. Uh, Porygon 2. Now, Porygon 2, unlike Porygon, is competitive. Um, I don't know if you guys have ran a Porygon 2, but if you haven't, you should, because 
That thing's a bulky monster. Um, it tanks a lot of attacks, physical and special. Um, EVO light pouring onto is just amazing. It's amazing bulk. It's a really good mon to run, and it gets amazing um, moves like Thunder Wave, Recovery. It could be a really good support Tri Attack. Um, I think I repped. Um, I would rep Tri Attack, Recover, Thunder Wave, and something else. I don't remember. I think I would have a um, like Psychic to kind of hit ghosts and stuff. But so now getting into Gen Three, we have the Hoenn line back, which eh, I mean we we already had Hoenn back in um. What was it? Sword Shield. So that's not really, like, incredible. It's not, like, amazing. It's not really, like, a game changer. Um, Flygon's back. I'm excited to see Flygon back. And um, we know that um, Metagross is back, too. So Metagross is a big one I'm really excited to see. It was the one pseudo-legendary that wasn't in the main game. So it's really crazy that, um, you know, we're going to get to see it back in the DLC. I love running competitive Meta Metagross, too. And um, Flygon's also really nice to see. I like Flygon. Um, I rep Flygon in my Black 2 playthrough, so I have some sentimental value to Flygon. He was my um, Lenaru. But um, now we have the Sinnoh. Um, the Sinnoh starters are back. Once again, kind of predictable because of um, uh, BDSP. So we have them back. Um, let's see what all is um, pimp chimping around the Sinnoh one. There isn't really too much. Porygon Z... Not as good as Porygon 2, in my opinion, but it is a great on. It's better on the offensive side, but even I think you know the balance of Porygon 2 with its offense is fine. Um, there isn't really that much to know about Gen 4. There's only so many Pokemon returning, and of course you have the evolution. Snorlax is returning. Munchlax will. You have Electivire returning because Electabuzz is, etc. Now Unova, I'm very interested in because now we have Zebstrika. Um, Zebstrika was obviously not in Sword Shield. In fact, Zebstrika has not been in any Switch game today, uh, main main series Switch game. And that's going to be a really cool one to see. Um, I don't think Sawaddle has been either. I love the Sawaddle line. Um, I run them in probably over half of my Gen 5 playthroughs. They're just really good. They're great coverage. Um, Whimsicott is back. Whimsicott is a big one for competitive. You guys know uh, Whimsicott um, with its prankster moves, prankster shenanigans and everything. It's just amazing. Cottony is back to um, hit the Little Cup level 1 crap. And uh, yeah, those are... Um, I see Galvantula's back. I like Galvantula. I repped him in um, my Black and White playthroughs as well. Otherwise, um, not seeing too much. That's it for Gen 6. Wow, Gen 6 is not much to talk about. Um, Meowstic and Trevenant are both amazing competitive mods. Meowstic for his support in doubles. Um, again, Prankster, T-Wave... Um, Trevenant for just its bulk, Harvest Ability, Leech Seed, Citrus Berry, Shenanigans. Okay, so we have the, uh, the Alola Trio back once again. They were in, um, Sword Shield, now they're back again. So we are gonna have Incineroar. We're gonna have Incineroar, gang. Uh, not much else to really say about it. Um, Rabombi, I think, was pretty good and competitive, but nothing too much. Minior is back, Shell Smash Minior. And for Generation 8, um, not much really mentioned. Duraldon's back, Duraldon, that's a pretty good one. And we have the uh, Legends Arceus, which will be in DLC, so, I mean, you don't have to wait that long for that. Enamorous, I've heard, is going to be a pretty big monster. A lot of these monsters are going to be monsters. I've watched a lot of analysis videos on them. So, overall, yeah, I, I'm, based off what I see, I'm pretty excited for the DLC launch, even if you're not getting the DLC, which a lot of people complain it, like, costs, you still benefit from it. You can still transfer the mods or trade for them or breed them or hack them, however you get them. I don't care. Um, <laughs> you get them, that's the point. You don't gotta pay the 30 bucks. But, um, yeah, that's gonna be all for this video, guys. I'm pretty happy about it. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any hopes that this uh, list is wrong and something won't be returning because of competitive or whatever reason or that something will be returning. And, um, your boy Jim's gonna be signing out. Check the links in the description. Check out my Discord. Check out my Twitch. All that fun stuff. And I hope everyone has an awesome day.